Okay, so we're going to quickly talk through some practice problems. Um, the first few of them actually depend on you having done the simulation in class. And we're going to take a look in just a second at the data table that's on page two in the packet that we got in class and complete the section from MPL to TC. But a couple of things first is to know the fixed inputs in our, in our simulation were the scissors, the stapler, and the desks. And those kind of represent the land and the capital resources. The variable input was primarily labor, right? We added a unit of labor every single round, so that changed that simulation. Students often tell me the paper and the staples are also variable. Um, we're not necessarily really going to concern ourselves with those that much. Um, so then we're going to take a look at page two in just a second. Okay, so now that we're done with this piece, um, we're going to take a look at some marginal product questions. And I realized after I, I went ahead and, 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 of course, copied all of these that, that I said calculate the marginal product, and I went ahead and did it already for you. But, but let's go ahead and talk through, like, why are these values what they are? There isn't a value for the zeroth unit of labor for marginal product because that unit doesn't technically exist. This marginal product that's listed here as 10 is actually the difference between these two is 10. And for that, it's the first worker, right? So the first worker's marginal product is 10. For the second worker, it's 15, because the second worker added 15. So that's our second worker's marginal product. And again, 20 is the difference between these two. 15 from these two, 10, 5, 0. So the marginal product of that seventh worker is 0, and then negative 5. And then with which unit does decreasing returns to labor begin? What causes that to happen? So where does the, the MP start to decrease? And that would be actually with this unit, with the third unit. So, and this is because of diminishing marginal returns, right? Diminishing marginal returns. And we can actually say because capital is fixed because capital is fixed, right? And we know that the increase for the first two workers happened because of specialization. So these first couple of workers generated additional units. In fact, that second worker increase and the third worker increase happened. Um, sorry, that's not with the third worker. That's actually with the fourth worker. Can't read. So it's, this, it's not with this worker. It's after that worker. So all of these workers show specialization. Um, between the zeroth worker and the third worker. So all of these are specialization because you get 10, 15, 20, it's going up. And then after that, after that, with that fourth worker, with which that fourth worker is actually where the diminishing returns start to set in, right? Because it's 15, 10, 5, 0, negative 5. With which unit does negative returns to labor result? That actually is the eighth unit. Um, and we could actually say that that's again for the same reasons, right? It's the same reasons as before. It's because capital is fixed and there's diminishing marginal returns. Um, there's some additional thought that you can put into this in thinking about, you know, that eventually the workers are starting getting into each other's way. They're starting to distract each other. Um, that in fact, adding that eighth worker reduces the amount of total product that can happen. And we would say generally given a fixed amount of resources, what happens when we add more inputs? There is diminishing returns to the input, right? To the variable, we could say, variable input. So whatever that variable input is, as we add more of it, there's going to be diminishing returns to it. We're going to get less and less. Eventually, it will happen. Um, out of it, and such as that we call it the law of diminishing marginal returns. So hopefully this has helped you out with some of the practice problems with problem set 3.1 on the production problem.